Hang on, Mr. Douglas. Yeah. Welcome back to Hanging with Mr. Douglas, where we journey the ever-winding road to personal awareness stretching and individual empowerment potentiating. It's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Today, and truly welcome, it's great that we get to get together to talk about power as it pertains to individuals and how to awaken and expand more of it within and around ourselves. Today, we are going to go through our larger-sized excerpt from Chapter 27, Chapter 27's title of Ingo Swan Secrets of Power, Volume 1, The Forgotten Connection of Power and Potency. This chapter does a real nice job of discussing the history of definitions and concepts relating to power, potent, and potency. And before anything else, Ingo makes a distinction that there is power on behalf of survival and power on behalf of everything else, and that the everything else can only get up and going once basic survival has been greatly supported, regulated, you know, somewhat guaranteed. He makes a point that through time, the power of individual survival has been minimized, while the importance of power at the group or societal level has been maximized. And in my humble observation, I think there is a rebalancing of those scales. Individuals now have access to tools that, at one point, only society in larger structures had access to. So now individual survival, and I would also say thrival, greater level ups of individual empowerment and individuation, I think we are going to experience on a societal level here in the very near future. But anyway, now that brings us right to our excerpt where we begin to walk and talk the path of historical definition exploration of power and the related ideas, such as potent and potency. Oh, where we go. The term potent is most certainly drawn from the Sanskrit pati, referring to master. The Sanskrit, in this sense, taken through Greek and into Latin as potere, in which language is referred to being strongly able in some potent sense, or, as can be said, powerful or full of potency. Most modern dictionaries render vague and somewhat impotent definitions for potent, and which clearly are not what the ancients had in mind. For clarity, there are distinctions between 1. whatever affects, influences, and even overwhelms, and 2. whatever does nothing of the kind. Whatever does nothing of the kind is certainly impotent, but what the ancients more probably meant by potent is more akin to the modern English terms dynamic or dynamism, which in some major sense at least refer to the potent quality of powerfulness. The earliest English definition of power, P-O-U-W-E-R, or power, P-O-W-A-R, is established as emerging at about 1297. It is given as illustration of forms. This definition is somewhat obscure today. Back then, it seems to refer to some kind of relationship or linkage between a king, master, who illustrated, demonstrated, or personified potent power, and distributed or delegated active amounts of it to others. In 1297, power, P-O-U-W-E-R, was also thought of in two additional ways. One, a body of armed men, a fighting force, a host, an army, and two, possession of command or control over others, dominion, rule, government, domination, sway, command, control, influence, authority over. By 1325, however, two definitions of power, P-O-W-A-R, emerged which we can easily recognize today. One, as a quality or prosperity, an ability to do or effect something or anything, or to act upon a person or thing, and two, a particular faculty of body or mind. (music) 
Now, it's pretty cool that Ingo finds potent coming in from Sanskrit. I enjoy this etymology. Then through Greek and Latin potere, but it starts with pati, meaning master. And uh, that's a powerful position or state of mind, I dare say. Then we get potere, meaning being strongly able. Nowadays, potent and powerful have a lot of overlap. Just from a real quick Google search from their Oxford Languages offering, potency is defined as having great power, influence, or effect, and from Merriam-Webster, having or wielding force, authority, or influence, synonymous with powerful or achieving or bringing about a particular result, effective. So yeah, potency, powerful, lots of overlap. But the excerpt goes on with Ingo telling us the ancients probably had potent as a, an understanding, a definition, be more in line with dynamic or dynamism, which we have addressed previously. And by 1297, the definition illustration of forms was given. And this one's interesting because it's saying potent has to do with showing, displaying, radiating, or giving out powers to others. And all of this is just the beginning, the dipping of toes into the deep dive that Ingo takes us into stretch the depths of our awareness when it comes to power and potency and the absence of this awareness in most frames of reference today, in most of our walking, talking reality boxes, as Ingo might say. One more point that ties into a little activity Ingo gives us. Potency radiates right? Pretty strongly. Or, obviously, we're able to pick it up pretty quick. So where there is a radiancy, a radiation of power, and its products, there is potency. So this exercise that Ingo gives us is simple. Observe at least five examples of things, individuals, and situations that radiate strongly or weakly for pretty obvious reasons. He adds, omit yourself, to avoid any ego stresses. And just off the top of my head, whether we like it or not, mobs of youths radiate unpredictability, violence, and therefore potency. An individual who takes action, or who is ready to, when the moment calls for it. In precarious circumstances or otherwise, who is mobile, who is not frozen in apprehension. I think we can make an argument that radiates potency. Live performers in the zone radiate potency. People struggling with their dog's doo-doo and that doggy bag may not radiate so much potency. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> what radiates potency in your view, in your frame of mind, in your reality box? Something to carry with you as you are out and about. And that wraps up this episode. As always, I'm having a great time sharing this potent information with you. If you'd like more empowering information, grab a copy of the audio version narrated by me. Find it on Audible. Find it on my website, mrdouglas.com. And uh, there should be a link in the description. Definitely visit ingoswan.com, I-N-G-O-S-W-A-N-N.com, to get to know the guide to our empowerment and his other masterworks more. One more chapter to go in Volume 1 of Ingo Swan's Secrets of Power. Thanks for hanging. I'm always having a good time with you. And as always, more power and potency to you.